All right. Normally, I like the anti-profit, but I just saw two two videos that he put out today, and both of which I'm just like, what are you doing, buddy? So. Wilson sucks as an interviewer. A few weeks ago, I watched him interview Andrew Tate. He let him get away with it like this. Recruiting girls to make TikTok videos and stealing the money. So it's really a financial crime? This statement is clearly false as he's not being charged for just making TikTok videos. He's being charged with human for using TikTok and more importantly, OnlyFans to funnel customers to his human operation. This is literally listed at the beginning of the fucking indictment. Tucker's interview with Trump wasn't much better. There are only three reasons why Tucker would behave in this way. Either one, he's a shit host who can't be bothered to do more than two pages worth of research. Number two, he's tired, he doesn't give a shit, and he knows if he lets his guests blabber on, he'll get the views regardless. Or number three, he's a partisan hack. Now, his interview with Andrew Tate pulled in 107 million views on Twitter alone, and his interview with Trump brought in 260 million views. And unfortunately, these numbers are less an indication of Tucker's stellar world-class reporting, but more an indication of the absolutely mind-numbing decline of the American intellect. Tucker. I mean, listen, I create shorts too, so I'm fucking guilty. But the, the thing is, is you're taking a, a nuanced two-hour-long conversation and uh, pulling one clip with the Andrew Tate thing. And I mean, don't worry. I looked up the uh, indictment documents release um, so, um, defendant Andrew Tate has been established that the actions of defendant consisting of the following at the beginning of 2021 on the territory of Romania, together with the defendant Tristan Tate and defendants Luana Radu and Georgia, Georgiana Nag Nagel, they formed an organized criminal, gr criminal group with the purpose of committing the crime of human trafficking through actions of recruiting victims carried out by the defendants Andrew and Tristan Tate. And then the second page is a little more easy to read. Um, so there's three charges um, under house arrest. The defendant Andrew Tate for committing the offenses of one, forming organized criminal group. So Rico. Uh, two, human trafficking. And it cites the criminal codes violated. 1.3, rape. So those are the three charges. Now, Romania, just like America, has a system where you're innocent until proven guilty. So I understand that, um, uh, you know, he has his opinion. But to, to be presenting something uh, and then criticizing an interviewer who is not trying to jump to conclusions before the court does... And then doing so yourself uh, just seems a little hypocritical to me. Um, now, if these charges are substantiated and, and there's evidence behind these, am I going to continue to support Andrew Tate? No, I'm not. Um, he has helped me understand some of the things that are going on that were very confusing to me. The way he's described certain things have been illuminating. But if he's uh, made his money through these avenues, that's absolutely despicable. I'm not defending that at all. So I just just wanted to highlight the concept that that you're you are trying to make someone seem guilty because there are charges levied against them. And the same situation with Trump. Everybody's jumping to conclusions and judgments, even though. You're not a judge, jury. You got nothing to do with the process. You're supposed to respect and honor the idea that people are allowed to have a free, open, and fair trial with a jury of their peers who have not already, ha already had their minds poisoned by the media and people putting out uh, information that's claiming that there's veracity to the indictments or charges before the, the proof and evidence has been presented. I think that everyone, regardless of how much you hate Donald Trump or Andrew Tate, I think that anyone who was facing a criminal trial would definitely appreciate the concept of having a court system that has not already prejudged you and decided that you're guilty based on what I saw in the media, the articles, the, the opinion pieces that have been put out. We know the media is not, not being truthful. 
Um, so the opinion pieces and the, the media reporting should not be the basis for your decision whether or not someone's guilty. You should reserve judgment according to the way the system works that we all agreed upon. You should reserve judgment until the court has seen the evidence. And once the, once the proceedings are over, um, evidence is usually available to be reviewed if you want to actually see the, the um, court documents, the evidence, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to watch testimony. I, I don't know if it's going to be a closed courtroom, but we'll be able to read the testimony. We'll be able to read the court trans transcripts, even if they do not allow a media circus to occur in the courtroom. Now, this next um, short is you know, I, I, I believe he's in America. I don't know. He wears a mask, so he wants all the, the accolades and, and fame without being identified. He wants the privilege of having an opinion without the responsibility of taking ownership for it and putting his face and his, his, his uh, you know, signature on it. So the masked man is going to tell you how to escape woke culture, and I don't think that you're going to like it way to escape woke culture is to simply move out of your fucking country. Now, I know you're probably opening up your keyboard telling me, well, it's not that easy to leave. Or you might be saying, this is my country. I'm going to stay and die with it. And while, yes, it is definitely fair to say that it is your country. Right. It, and, and America's founded on governing documents. It's a, it's a republic with a constitution. It's a free country. It's not a communist shithole that's fully monitored and your freedoms have been taken and the government's up your ass about everything. So my, my opinion is that if you believe that communism or socialism is the way to go, there's plenty of countries out there that are trying these experiments. Why don't you go check one of those out and see how it goes instead of trying to fuck up this country for people that literally come here, including immigrants who come here because it's free, because it's not a socialist or a communist shithole, because it has integrity, because we're supposed to have free media and free speech and the right to bear arms and all these wonderful things. And he's saying, fuck you, get out, progress is coming, and we're going to shit all over the Constitution and all this stuff. So, I mean, again, usually I like the guy. Usually he's got inspirational content, but he's literally explaining how to get out of woke culture, and he sounds like a, a, a woke, uh, you know, puppet to me, just regurgitating bullshit. Oh, if you're, if you're conservative and believe in traditional Christian values, fuck off, buddy. You know, go find a new country. Country. It is also fair to say that the people who disagree with you, the woke people, it's also their country too. Furthermore, it's probably safe to say that the woke people are winning. For example, there was a study in Canada recently where 40% of people said that social... I want to let them coexist. They're the ones that don't want to let me speak. I just don't want them to stay away from children. I'm going to stay away from children. You stay away from children. I'm not going to tell them to be super straight. You don't tell them to be transgender. Let let children be children in the in the vacuum of no sexuality and no adult problems and no adult bullshit. Let's just teach them. Let's fill their minds with good things and let them find out the realities of sexuality and human manipulation cuz sexuality is the easiest way to manipulate someone. Part of the reason we don't let adults in interface with children on that level is because you can manipulate people, but as soon as there's a sexual component, there's there's a whole bunch of other urges that start to occur that you can be manipulated. You want love, you want affection, you want that connection, and an adult understands how to reel you in and and you know they know how to manipulate because they've been manipulated often. So. Why can we not just agree to let the kids be kids and let adults be adults? We'll deal with our shit and we'll engage in an adult arena, adult to adult. We'll have rational conversations and return to a place where we can speak to each other because I, I want to exist and be myself and I want transgender and gay people and people of all races to be able to do the same. But no one can do that if you're persecuting any of these groups. If, if freedom is not truly free, then whoever is not free is the one being targeted right now. But it's easily transferred to any other group. If you're allowing that type of behavior, 
If you're allowing a certain group to silence others and preclude them from talking and say, you don't deserve a seat at the table, you don't deserve to be part of the conversation, then it's not freedom and it's not equality and it's not tolerance and acceptance or any of those things. These, these woke people that are saying, you, don't, you won't accept us, you won't tolerate us, won't let you talk, won't let you have an opinion, insult you personally, tell you that they hope that your kids die and you get caught in a plane crash or any any number of crazy personal insults because it's generally not like a oh well you know you you've got a good point i'm going to debate you with my facts from this side it's like no we just want kids to to be able to do whatever they want and it's like okay i was taught that i couldn't drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes or even consume a cup of coffee when i was a kid because it would stunt my growth and and impair my development my brain development everything i wouldn't be tall i wouldn't be any of this stuff and now you're saying that they can they can take drugs associated with the, the surgery they can take you know presumably opiates right are you going to let them what go without for for surgery i doubt it so you're going to let them take opiates you're going to let them take hormones and you're going to let them surgically modify their body before they can get a tattoo or a piercing uh if you're doing that then let's then they should be allowed to have piercings. They should be allowed to have tattoos without parental consent. They should be able to drink coffee, caffeine, smoke cigarettes, and drink. Because it's one or the other, right? Either kids can make decisions and, and do you know life-changing type things, like consuming alcohol, uh, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen. You get impaired, and you're, you're playing a game of Russian roulette. If you drink more than a certain amount, you lose control. So there, there's a whole, this is a much more complex conversation than it's, than the disingenuous people that are trying to have it and simplify it down and just make it real simple. Oh, well, we just want this. It started with tolerance and acceptance, and now it's demanding respect, demanding compliance, demanding speech, certain type of speech that doesn't, you that doesn't necessarily conform with reality. So I have to ask you what I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to address you, because I can't tell by looking at you. It makes society very hard to, to not uh, fall apart when you can't understand the rules of what you're supposed to do. How do we engage with each other when there's no clear rules and guidelines on how we interact with each other? Tolerance, right? If we had enough tolerance, we'd be able to have a conversation with each other, and all I see are just people getting in yelling matches and waiting for their turn to tell the other person why they're wrong. There is no listening. And we're not teaching the children listening because we as adults don't remember how to listen. Socialism is superior to capitalism. On top of that, there was another study where 30% of Gen Zers said that having cameras in their home for the purpose of surveillance to keep them safe yeah, was great. something that they would do be okay with. So yeah, when it comes home. down to it, do you have fuck the ability you. to stay in your country and fight for policies that you believe in? Sure. But do you also have the ability to just say fuck it and live your life according to your terms? I would say absolutely. The easiest way... The answer is not to leave. The answer is to grow the fuck up and realize that um, just by speaking with someone who has a different view than you does not compromise you, does not make you part of the problem. It makes you part of the solution because the only way we figure things out and the reason America has had an edge is because information historically here has, flow, has flowed faster than anywhere else because there's been no restrictions, there's been no content moderation, there's been none of the roadblocks that you get in countries where they need to control the narrative to keep things going. The concept of America has been free and open communication. Good ideas flow, bad ideas flow, both are flowing at the same rate. The good ideas wind up pushing the bad ideas down because the good ideas are good and they are supported by facts and logic and everybody can understand that these are sound well thought out and and use the the principles of the scientific process to get rid of the bad inf information rather using the rather than using the principles of dictatorships and totalitarian regimes to simply suppress information that they don't want to confront and disprove. They just want it to go away. That's how we lose our grip on reality. That's how we lose our ability to meaningfully engage 
is by losing our ability to honestly and openly communicate with each other. I hope that we as Americans can wake up and realize what a huge fundamental problem. This is a problem at the bedrock level because everything else is built on the concept of being able to understand and communicate with each other using a common language. Not only are we forgetting the common language, we cannot engage with each other without coming to anger. And anger is poisoning, anger and hate is poisoning the heart of America right now, and it will kill it on a long enough time scale if we do not find it within our hearts to love our fellow American citizens of all colors and genders and races. And that goes both ways. You don't demand respect. You earn it. So start going out there. If you care about America, start going out there and earning respect. And if everybody would do that, America would be great again. And I don't mean that offensively. I mean that genuinely. It would be great for everybody. Take care. I'll see you again soon.